What's going on guys? Welcome to episode two of Building the Ultimate Motorcycle Garage. I am Chase and this is the series where I'm gonna take you along as I transform this relatively normal garage into what I believe is going to be the ultimate motorcycle garage. In episode one, I kind of gave you an overview of the garage, showed you the space we're working with. And on this episode, we're gonna change the flooring up. But guys, before we get into changing the flooring, we gotta say thanks to the sponsor for this episode, and that is the Moto Amino app. What it is is basically a phone-based, motorcyclist-only social media platform that you can share stuff with, you can chat with other riders, you can create groups of people and group chats. I really enjoy it for using the group chat function. I actually have a garage build chat on there. So if you guys are interested, make sure to download the app. And if you do, make sure to follow me, Chase on Two Wheels, over on the app, and get in on the garage build chat. And of course, guys, I cannot forget about y'all that bought decals to help raise enough funds to build this series. If it wasn't for y'all, wouldn't it be able to build this garage? So massive appreciation to you guys. There will be a list in the credits of all the people that bought decals. But this garage floor has got to get upgraded. Let's do this thing. All right, so guys, before we get into the flooring part, it's probably gonna take a good amount of time, and I don't know if I'll have daylight the entire time, so what I'm gonna do is do a couple modifications around the garage that are super necessary, makes total sense if you watch the first episode. So I'm gonna do those real quick, and then we will get to the flooring. First off, these outlets gotta get fixed. All right, this is our first issue. So I bought this little six port with a screw in the middle thing. It'll work on a regular outlet, but this one has all this reset information on it. Crap. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna to try to take this off and see what's inside of it. Oh man, that doesn't look like it's gonna work. So yeah, what I need is like a little screw area, like right there in the middle, which is what a typical outlet has. This one has this whole test reset crap. Okay, this looks like we're gonna have to just use a couple surge protectors here. That's unfortunate. Okay, a little bit of an unfortunate news, but that's fine, we can, uh, we can make do with that. Surge protectors are fine option as well. While I screw this thing in, if there's any electricians that are watching this, anybody know the amount of voltage you can put through one single outlet? That's the only thing I'm kind of wondering now, like, will I be putting too much power through this outlet? Granted, I'm probably gonna power the entire garage through this outlet, and then the outlet up in this uh, ceiling is gonna be the one that powers all the lighting. Damn you. Alrighty, for this outlet, we're going to have to do something a little more creative. Alright guys, so this outlet looks like I'm going to have to get some special stuff. And I also need to grab some lights. They're only going to be temporary in here, but I'm going to go grab some lights real quick and then I will be back. All right, guys, so our temp lighting is going to be this. Just grabs, it's like 50 bucks. It's one little shop light. I've got two of them, and I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna put them in here so that at least we get some good temporary lighting. All right, so here's the plan. You guys can see the garage door doesn't come all the way back on the little railing. So I'm going to try to attach these lights, or one of them, on this rail, using this as a support or whatever. Then another one here, so these lights are like pull lights. So we'll pull, we'll turn them on like that. Ooh, that is gonna be a tight fit. All right, so before we get this thing installed, I wanna see how bright this thing is. So cue the dark garage. Don't worry guys, I'm still here. I've got my uh, trusty iPhone. I'm gonna be plugging the light in now. Okay. 
All right, it's plugged in. Can you guys see me? I'm right here. Hi, that's my hand, that's my face. All right, pulling the cord. Oh my good God. Hey, okay, this is pretty cool. Well, you guys can't see. What about, can you see me? Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> so this thing's pretty bright. I don't know what two of them are gonna do. I am slightly worried that the power cord isn't gonna reach from each side. One way to find out. Okay, let's, goodbye. So before we get too worried about how we're gonna get the extension cable over there, I mean, that's not really a problem to solve, but getting this thing attached to the top of the garage is a problem. Okay. This thing, I assume, just goes in here and goes over and hangs. Oh, so I need my own damn hook. <laughs> These dudes ain't ever heard of zip ties. Hmm. So I just remembered I have like a box of art supplies that I used to use in art school. And I had this wire, much stronger probably than zip ties. So I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna get that thing somehow attached. So right now, zip ties are holding the metal pieces together. I'm gonna to use this metal rod stuff and I'm gonna attach it to this metal piece and I'm gonna attach it again up here so that the whole thing will stay. So you guys can see what we have is the metal wire here that runs up into the metal thing, whatever this little brace is. And then this is also where the other side is. You can see the little zip tie here and uh, it holds up. The thing I'm slightly worried about is when I do this. Back to the drawing board. All right, so guys, the final solution wasn't the prettiest thing, but it works, watch. I'll show you how I did it. So I've now rerouted this to the top here. It all goes over, it almost parallels with the metal cable. And now I have an extra metal cable that I just twisted together at the top that supports it by the side. You can see it doesn't go anywhere. I feel like that's gonna stay a lot better. That doesn't solve this problem though. Oh no, no. All right, so guys, as you can see, that one is done. I'm gonna go do the other one. And since it's the exact same process, I'm gonna spare you the tiddly bits and just do it off camera and then we'll be done. And then we'll be back. All right guys, so we're back and in true fashion, the second one ended up going up easier than the first one. When, once I did this one, you can see I got it. It's plugged in the exact same way as the other one is, except it doesn't have that extra wire running along it. And I actually removed it from the other side. So if you look right there, I took the wire off because it wasn't really necessary. So my goal with these, I think is gonna run this wire up into there, zip tie it, run them along the ceiling and plug them in there. I'm not gonna worry with running the wires through the ceiling in this episode, unless the flooring takes longer than daylight that I have, in which case then I'll go do that. But I think it's time to get to the flooring. All right guys, so everybody's wondering, Chase, what are you gonna do with this concrete floor? Well, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the concrete floor. These are Swiss tracks. So if you guys don't know what Swiss tracks are, they are basically a click together flooring solution for people that don't want to touch the actual flooring of their garage. So we have the cement here that I can't mess with, but if I put the Swiss tracks down, it can make it have an entirely different look without affecting the flooring that's currently there. Now, most people get Swiss tracks for like this, just this rubber top for their garage. I've got actually a special type of Swiss tracks. It's basically the exact same thing, except they have grooves and you put panels in there. Now I gotta show you the type of panels because it's awesome. All right, let's bust into these Swiss tracks. <laughs> All right guys, so I bet you didn't expect this. This is the Swiss tracks panel on top of the actual track. So you can see the track is there. This is super strong material. There's gonna be no problem using this as a garage floor. 
and I've chosen to have a wooden style garage floor. The garage floor is now going to look like this instead of the concrete. Now that might not sound like it's gonna be cool, but trust me, everything is gonna match. You guys can see the click togetherness. They've got these little grooves and if everything works out, all the pieces will just click together. All right, so before we start this install, I need to move everything out of the garage and then sweep it because I don't want any debris in the ground. So that is what we gotta do now. have thought cleaning an entire garage <laughs> would be so much work okay we're gonna unpack all of the swiss tracks and then i've got to figure out how to lay these things on the ground because i don't really know how to do that learning processes <laughs> so guys i was unpacking these things and i'm like if you guys look at them they're flat flat and then they have little these little holes and i'm like How's that supposed to fit in together? But then there's these little notches in there and they just click into place. Little click. This is cool. This is like science, man. motorcycle lift area the only weird part about the motorcycle lift is I don't have it yet so I'm gonna have to go off of their diagram and hope that that's the right size um, I think it is though because I gave them the dimensions for everything and they helped me lay it out so that was pretty awesome uh, so far installing these things is literally like Legos you just click them all together it's working out really good so I want to continue and get the first half done right now These are the exact same way. They've got the little ridges here in the flat sides. So I assume they'll just... There you go. Simple as that. Okay. Well, continue on. All right, so I got to the front part where I'm trying to get the ramp underneath there. I thought that would be difficult, but it's literally just raise it up a little bit. Same way as the other way. And now you got a smooth ramp onto there. This stuff is really impressive, man. Well guys, as you can see, I am halfway done. Check it out. Now remember these pieces back here, that is only because I am, uh, Gotta cut those down to make them fit. My lips are salty. 
All right, so I'm halfway done through the install, so I figured I would talk through some stuff with you guys with doing the install. Side note, if you have a bad back and you're thinking about getting some Swiss tracks, be careful because it involves a lot of like bent over, like placing. I've been placing getting up and stepping, but ideally you have a little like rubber mallet and you can just like pop it down. That'd probably be easier. But as you can see here, we have wood, we have the motorcycle lift area, and then we have the old concrete right here. Uh, so far, there have been no problems. There weren't even problems in the front. Stepping on this sounds like floor. And when I first was installing the couple of them, you need all of them so you can have that feeling of a floor because otherwise they'll slide around a little bit. One of the issues that I think I'm gonna have is if I ever need to adjust like these guys, it won't be too bad. But if I need to like, let's just say I break this one. I don't even know if that's possible. But if I broke this one, I don't know how to take that out. So that's one thing that might be a little weird. I don't know, I mean, I guess we'll figure out in the future, maybe. I also wanted to talk about why I chose Swiss Tracks. Now, I told you guys in the first episode that I am renting the a place I'm in, so I couldn't do the epoxy floor, but even if I owned this place, I wouldn't have done the epoxy floor where you have to like coat the floor and stuff and then sprinkle crap. No offense to anybody that has epoxy flooring, but every garage has epoxy flooring. And that's probably because it's the most amazing thing, but I'm the type of guy, I'm so much more visual than I probably should be. So even if something works better, but doesn't look as good, I'm probably going to choose the one that looks better. Hence, why I have an R6 and not any of, like, the R6 is not the best 600, but because I think it looks the best, that's the one I want. It's the same concept for the flooring. Just because there's a good option, there's like a technically the best option, I'm not going to be excited to walk out into a garage that just has like a regular flooring like every other garage. That's one of the reasons I chose to go with Swiss tracks instead of like an epoxy flooring. Continuing with that mentality, that's also why I went with wood as a look for the garage floor because I think it's so much more unique to have a wood looking floor instead of something like these guys all over the place. Cause you see a lot of garage images with Swiss tracks and they get the little cross hat stuff and that looks cool and that's new and that doesn't look as kind of everything else as epoxy, but nobody has a wood floor. Like that's just, that's just awesome to me. And the fact that I can have a wood floor, but have the durability of something like plastic, it's winds all over the place, man. So, um, not gonna lie, that was my break because I got tired. So what I'm gonna do now is finish installing the rest of the flooring and then we gotta start cutting. That's a whole nother section. We'll get to that afterwards. <sighs> Quick note, forgot to mention this. When you're installing stuff, you can see right here where I've got a line of tracks. Make sure you fill them in, in a wave, like go this way and then fill them all in. Because if you do one single line, they get kind of wiggly, much more better, much better structurally if you do them in groups. Carry on. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a fully Swiss tracked garage. There's a couple of small spots we got to fix. Obviously, we got to do the uh, back row. Oh, check this out. All right, so you guys know I started over here and obviously it's flush to the wall. That's gotta get cut, but check out this side. These are all squares, by the way. Look how much space there is on the end. With all the furniture and stuff in here, I'm not even gonna have to cut any because it's such a thin little space. So that was really awesome. I didn't know they were gonna math out to be that, but whatever. Now I'm gonna go get the cutter and I'm gonna show you guys that thing. So guys, obviously I've gotta cut some tile and I certainly can't do it with my little multi-tool. The cool thing is I don't wanna buy a cutter so that I can cut these things for one job. Like that would be pointless to me because after I do the job, what am I gonna do with the cutter now? So what Swiss Tracks does that's really neat is they let you rent a cutter. Now, I don't know what a cutter looks like and I don't know how big they are. So I'm assuming it's in this giant black box. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how big the black box is. This also came in the mail. So I guess this is my cutter. <sighs> I 
Holy cow. All right, so now, we should probably do the math before we do this. So I've got a tape measure, and what I'm gonna do is measure the area that this thing needs to be, keeping in mind the direction of the tile, like there's two corners that are flat, the two female corners, I'm trying to keep all that in mind. And it looks like I need them to be right at almost 12 feet exactly. Okay, let's try cutting a sample one and then we'll go from there. Also, I've got the entire back wall lined with all the pieces that are supposed to go there. Plus I've got probably 10 to 15 extra pieces. So there's no worries if I mess up. I got plenty of pieces to like, I got plenty, these are all the whoops pieces. Ideally I'll still have them when I'm done. I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna pull this thing down. I've got it at 12, yeah. Holy cow, that worked so freaking good. Look at that. Holy crap, this cutter is amazing. Okay, now we gotta see if it'll actually fit. That, that moment you cut it wrong. We gonna, we gonna try that one more time. Okay, so be careful when you're cutting your tracks. It gets a little confusing, but, or at least it did for me, I might just be stupid. <sighs> this one should be the right size. And that should go in there. Boom. All right, so now I just gotta do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 times. All right, guys, we're finally done. You can see the edges are all cut. I'm gonna, do, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the garage and uh, that way I can show you guys what this place actually looks like and I'll show you before I, I put all the furniture back in. All right, clean up time. And guys, with the flooring put in, that is gonna be the end of episode two of installing the flooring, which is our Swiss track something or other. Um, overall impressions, uh, it went really easily. Um, the cutter was fantastic once I figured out how to use it, but hopefully you guys watching this video will have an easier time with that. Now I can get all the stuff moved in and we can move on with the garage build series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and you found it helpful if you're trying to put in a garage floor, especially if you want something unique and cool. And I know some of you guys are gonna ask, did you get sponsored by Swiss Strikes and they send this stuff to you? No, I actually paid for this flooring. Swiss Strikes did give me a deal, so I appreciate it, Swiss Strikes. But um, this stuff is not cheap. That's probably the downside of it. It is like six or seven dollars a square foot. It gets really expensive. That doesn't sound like a lot, but even in a 20 by 20 garage, that gets really expensive. So make sure you consider that and you know do all the pricing and stuff and use their online little uh, graph thing to figure out how many you need. Super helpful. And guys, with that, I am Chase on Two Wheels. This is the Ultimate Motorcycle Garage, or at least it's the episode two of what will be the Ultimate Motorcycle Garage. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give me a like and let me know what you think about the floor in the comments. Um, I think it looks pretty freaking awesome and I am so happy that I can move stuff in here and not have to move it out all again. And with that, I am out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for spending some time with me. I will see you on episode three where we do something with these walls because yellow's not going to fly. See you guys then. Later. Uh, but before we leave, uh, most people have already left probably, but you know, me and you can have a conversation now. All those comments of like, Chase, you can't do anything with the floor. You can't do anything with the wall. Uh, what's the point? Expand your mind, people. There's so many things you can do without affecting the current floor or the current wall. Think outside the box. I'll see you guys on episode three.